And we're back with more of the Shock News Awards 2023. We're going to talk about a very important category to Shock News. We love voice acting performances in video games. So we like to highlight some of our favorite voice actors. And we acknowledge that this category is slowly turning into best performance, too, because there's so much performance capture involved in a lot of these games now. So you're not just... It's not just your voice necessarily. It could be your your body or your movements too. Uh, but for the purposes of having Bill be able to fit the words on an award graphic, we're just going to call it best <laughs> voice actor. And here are the nominees. I'm going to say their name and then what character they played in what game. Matt Mercer. Ganondorf. The Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Alan Lee. Shang Tsung, Mortal Kombat 1, Neil Newbin, Asterian, Baldur's Gate 3, Yuri Lowenthal, Peter Parker, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Alejandro Saab, Oswald, uh, Octopath Traveler 2, and Melanie Libbard, I believe is how you pronounce her last name? Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2. All of these voice actors did amazing jobs uh, with their performances this year. And we need to celebrate uh, their performances, but also debate who was the best voice actor of the year. Uh, I'll start. Matt Mercer did an excellent job as Ganondorf. Stupid, sexy Ganondorf is back in Tears of the Kingdom. And uh, scary character, uh, you know, obviously evolves into the Demon King at certain points in the story. Or, you know, there's flashbacks in the story that involve Matt Mercer's voice, too. There's just a sense of gravity every time you hear his voice in the game. And, uh, yeah, it's great. I wouldn't say that Zelda games tend to have the best voice acting. Uh, when compared to other games with more dialogue. But uh, Matt Mercer did an excellent job uh, with what he had in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I think it was like the first trailer, right? We we heard his voice when the Blood Moon was rising. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, that trailer was hype as hell too. Uh, but yeah, his words are... Whenever he speaks in this game, something cool is about to happen or is happening. So it's a, uh, and also something evil. Uh, the guy yeah. is S tier at his evil laugh game. Excellent at that evil laugh voice, but also just there's a sense of gravity to everything he says in Tears of the Kingdom, and I just thought he did a great job. Does uh, anyone else want to give Matt Mercer some flowers, or should we move on to the next one? Okay, David. Talk about Alan Lee's performance in Mortal Kombat 1. It is... So there's this grin the Shang Tsung model makes whenever he's feeling (laughs) smug. It's just like, hmm. And, like, Alan Lee's voice just fits that perfectly. This The game... I love the story and the lore, and the the acting is so over the top, it's just perfect. And Shang Tsung is this, like, you know, mustache-twirling Saturday morning (laughs) cartoon villain is just delightful it's it's also cool to see shang sung back because he's kind of been relegated in terms of super villains in mortal Kombat for a long time so yeah you know any any game where shang sung is kind of pulling the strings and uh sounding um cartoonishly diabolical while he's doing it is is a fun time in my book yeah, and it's a bit of an origin story for the character right yep yeah, new origin story. Uh, and I just really like that you see that that ambition. I think the interesting thing about Mortal Kombat 1 story in general is that even though Liu Kang learns that like just kind of hitting the reset switch doesn't work because people are pulled in certain directions, it's, it's unavoidable. And um, even though Shang Tsung gets a new origin story, he still does a lot of Shang Tsung stuff, but eventually there's... Um, there's some surprising twists near the end of the story that are also just laugh out loud funny. Like all the good guys going, the bad guys are getting away, and Shang Tsung like ha ha ha, and then the good guys like oh no. Anyway, like they didn't chase after them, and it's just hilarious. But 
Yeah, Alan I Lee is great say, in Shang Tsung. I got to the halfway point of that story, and once I got to the halfway point, it hit me, wait, this isn't Kerry Tagawa. Yeah. And when I found out that it was Alan Lee, I'm like, he's doing an incredible Shang Tsung. I wouldn't have known that it wasn't yeah. the that it wasn't Kerry Tagawa who they used in Mortal Kombat 11. He does such a great iteration of this character. And also, not to not to spoil too much, but like his plan kind of blows up in his face. And his reaction to his plan blowing up to his face and the way he, and just his cadence is the way he carries himself off. He's great in this game. He's great in this story. Mm-hmm. A very good nominee. Uh, next up, this is a uh, fan favorite, I, I have to say. Uh, also based <laughs> on our, based on just our social media uploads of a video interviewing Neil, uh, a lot of people really liked Neil Newman's uh, performance of Asterian in Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Donovan, were you were you buddies? Did you have a vampire buddy in Baldur's Gate 3, or were you enemies? I did have Asterian in my party, although he did not like me at all, because I, I did not play my character like an, an asshole. I think that, <laughs> realistically, you could have nominated maybe any of the like main party actors. For the games, narrator! The narrator as well, also in there, because they, they all do tremendous work, but obviously Asterian became the fan favorite. And I think one, just from a technical standpoint, I have no idea how these voice actors do all of these lines that are in that game. There, there has to be like, you have to have like a phone book full of dialogue that you have to say in so many different inflections and tones to fit so many scenarios. And then Asterian specifically is such a heightened personality that it has to be twice as hard because he's always just like at an 11. Everything he says, even when he's just talking about wanting to get like a drink of water, he's like so bombastic and over the top and suave. That has to be, uh, you just have to be on it at all times as a voice actor, which has to be very laboring, I, I imagine. Yeah. And like um, his voice doesn't sound like that. He's doing a voice. No. no. Yeah. So like, <laughs> he's got range. <laughs> yeah, but to have that range, but also to Donovan's point about the sheer volume a voice acting required uh, to mm-hmm. have Baldur's Gate 3 turn out like it did. Yeah, I don't know how they did it. And having to keep that voice for an extended period of time, like in your pocket, is a very, very mm-hmm. impressive talent. I'd also like to chime yeah. in just like people like that character in, in Baldur's Gate 3, but I also like the point that he's also Heisenberg in Ari Village, which is like two completely oh, different voices to complete different mm-hmm. roles then that range to me that's like that range is so incredible to be able to do that and yep. do that thing because like not to anyone on this list but a lot of people like if you get stuck doing the cute anime boy in shows you're doing the cute anime boy everywhere right but like neil newborn has this incredible range of stuff and he's done more stuff than Baldur's gate Baldur's gate is what put him on the map but he did heisenberg he's done a lot of like incidental voices on call of duty and matt mercer started that way too but like he's got a tremendous range, I think, and he's definitely a great nomination for this category just because mm-hmm. of that range. The the difference between Heisenberg and Asterion are just so night and day. You wouldn't believe it's but the yeah. same person unless you saw it on the credits. I do agree with Donovan's point though that a lot of the voice actors in Baldur's Gate three could have had this nomination, uh, mm-hmm. including the narrator, where just the sheer volume of voice acting required for that game is astonishing. But yeah, everyone's favorite vampire oh spoiler the guy with fangs might want to bite you sorry <laughs> everyone um, wants to bite you in that game yeah <laughs> your whole party is go. so suave and thirsty for not me. In a fun it's way. weird <laughs> well Al- owlbear didn't bite me yet <laughs> yet <laughs> anyone else want to give neil some flowers before we move on or are we good we're good next up another excellent uh performance uh, by Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker. Donovan, you reviewed Spider-Man 2. Can you talk a little bit about how Yuri did in this role? Yeah, yeah this is when we were talking about the nominations. I, I know we as a staff presented like, Naji Jeter is also great in that game, and he is, and Laura Bailey is great as Mary Jane Watson as well. But I think that Yuri Lowenthal specifically is given like a lot of extra material to chew on because they're doing the symbiote storyline, and obviously, you know, Spider-Man mythos, Symbiote messes with your your head, your emotions, makes you a drama queen, makes you wrathful and vengeful, and he hits all those notes. Um, we've seen like the happy, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and he goes to some, some pretty dark places in this game. He has some scenes where he's acting, and I'm like, 
if this was the Oscars and they were playing like the 20 second clip when they announce every nomination, I'm like, this is the scene that they would throw up for Yuri Lowenthal, where he's just like given a master class in, in voice acting. So, uh, yeah, I think he definitely deserves an award for his work as, uh, as Peter Parker here. Especially. He's and also we... coming to terms with the events of the last game where, mm -hmm. where, uh, where May dies at the end of the last game. And that comes up quite a bit like during the symbiote storyline and, and the guilt that he's racked with just the, the level of emotion that Yuri Lowenthal puts into that performance is, it's just incredible. And it puts him above a really talented cast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention like it's part audio design, but it's definitely voice acting that miles and Peter's voice actors had to record the same conversations multiple times for what context they were in. So if you're yeah. flying through the air, you're yelling. So like there's like, you know, Pete is yelling and then, you know, uh if you're standing on the ground, you have like a different intonation to your voice. It's just the amount of dialogue in that game, but also multiply it by three basically for what they had to do. Uh, just because of the contextual nature of their voices, I think is even more impressive. It's more just the whole game's design, but uh, as the... I know that this is a game that features Miles and Pete, but this really did feel like a Peter Parker story that Miles was a part of more than, you know, the inverse. So P Yuri does carry the story in a lot of ways. And Donovan mentioned that his voice, the, the way his voice changes uh, when the symbiote is, is around versus um you know traditional pete uh definitely yeah you know, like there's there's like two things going on in the game right there's miles trying to write his college essay and there is pete trying to get past the death of may and like it's shown through these different scenes with mary jane where she's like are you gonna get these boxes out uh by the end of the game it's all resolved in a very emotional way that i think uh Yuri's performance enhanced. Like, but that's not I mean, to say that Najee Jeter's performance was bad because he no. also has his own big story where he's one of the villains that gets kidnapped is Mr. Negative from the last game and he killed Miles' dad in the last game. Miles trying to confront that and trying to not go overboard in a way that Spider-Man is not supposed to. It's not easy for him. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, when you juxtapose that with what Peter's going through with the black suit, it, it it brings their stories together very well. And yeah. Nati's performance is really good, but I love Yuri's performance with the black suit. He's, and this is going to sound like a joke, but he's a way better, like, black suited Spider-Man than, you know, Tobey Maguire in, back back in the day. And, you know, all that's missing is him doing that stupid dance, although he did do it at Comic-Con. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying about uh, with the symbiote just the uh those scenes where he's just completely lost his way but going back to what you said spider-man can't kill spider-man can't kill anyone and there are times where you really feel it for miles like miles wants to avenge his dead father and he has this push and pull inside himself but also with his friends and also from pete saying like this is not you miles this is not what you are like uh, and I feel like Pete, you're right. Those those two stories like are perfect reflection of each other. But yeah, Yuri I, I, basically ex Yuri's Peter basically expects to to fail at some point. He expect he almost expects to come up short. Whereas he looks at Miles and he goes, "You're su you're supposed to be better than me. You have the potential to be a better Spider Man." And I love the way that comes through in the story. Yep, excellent game. Enhanced by Yuri's performance. Very good nomination in this category. Ozzy, tell me about Oswald. Or Oswald. Oswald is somebody who, when you meet him in Octopath Traveler 2, he is in prison. He is framed for the murder of his wife and daughter. And uh, when he and he knows that he didn't do it because he it comes out that his his partner, his uh, academic partner ended up murdering his wife and and you find out he kidnaps his daughter to raise as his own it's i'm sorry i'm spoiling a little bit of oswald's storyline but like it's a very twisted storyline and when you meet oswald like he's 
we mentioned this in another category. He's very robotic. He's very mechanical. He doesn't he doesn't take like social cues very well. He's you know set in his ways. He's set in his academic ways. But he has a thirst for revenge. And when he actually confronts, uh, when he confronts Harvey, his old partner, and he sees everything that he's done and everything that he's been doing and everything he's got planned, you see that vengeance want to come out with him. And the way his performance comes out and he just yells out, Harvey! Like, it's sorry to blow up the mic right there, but like, <laughs> it's, you feel it. You, you feel it right here. His performance is excellent. I love him in this story. It, it makes his performance stand out above a lot of other great performances. This is another game with a really talented cast. I love what, I love Throne Throne's storyline. I love Temenos as a detective. He's probably one of my favorites, but Oswald stands out above everybody else. This may not sound like a hot take, but to people who haven't paid attention to Octopath Traveler 2, it might. This game has much better voice acting than The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Like, way better. Yes. And, uh, you know, I know that Zelda is massive, but this game is also gigantic. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I just, uh, the amount of dialogue in this game is just massive. So it enhances the game for sure. Uh, I haven't had a chance to run into this character yet, but it sounds like Alejandro. He's a, he's a, he's a treat, and you're going to want yeah. him in your party too because he's probably the best character, one of the best characters in the game. Yeah, he sounds like my kind of dude. I'm like, oh, yeah, gruff curmudgeon. I'm like, what, what, what? JRPG party is complete without a gruff curmudgeon? I mean, and I would like, I really like the take that they took with Oswald on how magic works in this fantasy fiction universe. I would disagree that he's robotic. I would say that he's a scientist. He's very analytical. He's extremely in his own head at all times, thinking of all outcomes and possibilities. Because for him, magic is a series of calculations that he uses to manifest the elements that he wants. It's the breakdown of magic in a lot of pop culture is magic is basically technology that we don't understand. Yeah. And so, like, you have these moments where he goes through entire conversations in his own head and he even like has he even like claims to one of the other characters that he has a version of himself that he argues with in his own head in order and debates with in order to come to the most reasonable conclusion of any given situation but then there's the fact that there's his seething desire to get revenge and that's always kind of just bubbling under the surface of like there's a growl in him at every single line of dialogue that he does where like he's being thoughtful. He's trying to take the best step possible, but his desire to, to get Harvey is always like right there threatening to overtake him at any given time. Um, yeah, I, I need to spend more time with this game. That's, that's been, a trend throughout these categories is just Octopath Traveler 2. Check it out. Yeah. Very good. Uh, On to the next and final nomination in this category. Melody Libbard, the voice of Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2, does an excellent job. And is like a kind of the main character, right? Of Alan She's Wake one 2? of the main characters. Yeah, right? Like, uh, at least at the very beginning, she certainly is. Uh, but yeah, like I think cool, fresh, new character for this game. And uh, I think she kills it uh, kind of across the board. TJ, you're nodding in approval. Uh, yeah, Saga Anderson is my favorite part of Alan Wake 2. She brings so much to the game. Like her unfamiliarity with anything going on with Alan, anything going on with Bright Falls. She is a savant detective. Like she, she, her, her access to this mind place inside of her own head allows her to come to conclusions that few other people can. And there's like, and then it, the stakes are raised. The story creeps out into the world. It affects her, but it also quickly begins to affect people that she loves. And there is always like, she there was always a sense that saga wants to believe she has it under control because she believes in her abilities as a detective but the uncertainty that the dark place introduces to her world 
you really start to like feel it as the story goes on like it's pushing her it's pushing her to her limits and her belief that she has to be right she has to be certain she has to be confident just constantly being challenged by the supernatural things she can't control it's it's a conflict throughout the game that's really I, Melanie Liberd brings that conflict well. She embodies that conflict, conflict very well. I feel a lot of this. I saw a lot of similarities. This isn't a bad thing, but like to like Scully in X Files. You know what I mean? Like this cop kind of out of her area of expertise, but like learning about this other world and these other things that can happen in it, and opening her mind up to different experiences. There's a lot of that in there, which is kind of cool for the old people here who knew what X Files is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like her banter with Casey too, at least early on in the game. Like yeah. they do a really good job of like setting the scenes uh, with just how those two kind of make fun of each other at times. Um, I also really like she, it's it's the classic ar- archetype of the plucky young agent who's so excited about the case and is the shit has not yet hit the fan. <laughs> and I really like how she played that as well. Yep. For sure. Uh, All of these nominees, excellent. They all did a great job. The games that they are part of all are worth checking out. Uh, This has been the refrain in almost every category. This was a stacked year. Uh, Anyone we left off this list, you know, I think we mentioned in the case of Baldur's Gate 3, there's, there's more than one voice actor in Baldur's Gate 3 that did a good job. Uh, but yeah, obviously, Neil kind of stuck out this year. Let's get to voting. Steve, I'll start with you. I'm going with Ganondorf. Matt Mercer. Ozzy. I think I talked myself into Yuri Lowenthal. I'm going to go with Yuri Lowenthal Spider-Man. Yeah, there. TJ. Uh... Man, I I think I'm going with all I, I think I'm going with Alejandro Saul. I love Oswald. He's my favorite character in the game, and uh I have enjoyed every moment with him. Okay. Greg. I'm gonna go with Neil. Not a single vote has been the same so far. <laughs> <laughs> this is the device the device of the one that everything changes. Donovan. Uh, God, I, I think this uh, topic, I did not expect this one to be so tough when it came time for me to actually cast my vote. I'm yeah, your nominee it's... your nominee field yeah. in the other part of the spreadsheet is, like, pretty <laughs> definitive. So I'm kind of interested to hear this. Ah, uh, man. I'm going to go... I'll stick with, stick with my heart and go with Yuri Lowenthal, Speed of Park. Wow. David? Um, Saga Anderson is one of my favorite characters in the series, so I'm going to go Melanie Libbard. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me get these absentee ballots in. Bill is voting for Neil Newbin. And Denny is voting for Melanie Libbard. And Sam is voting for Neil Newbin. Which leaves me in an interesting situation because I could cause I could cause a vote off here, or I could you know just have a peaceful transition of power in the best voice actor. Category. This is when you go well, well, well. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Asterian is a great character, but. Uh, I think Saga Anderson is a better character. Um, I'm going to vote for Melanie Liberd. I thought she did. She's she did an excellent job, and I just that character injects this. Just it injects some attitude into that universe that I think was needed. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, she does a great job. I it's the mind place that really does it for me. It's like a, it's just a different kind of performance. When you have to to handle the mind plays, the world that's changing. I just thought she does an excellent job. So that has created a tie 
between Neil Newbin and Melanie Libbard. So we have to re-vote between those two. Uh, so yeah. I'll start with David. Let's stick with Melanie Libbard. Okay. Donovan. I'm going to go with Neil Newbin. I'm going to stick with Melanie Libbard. Greg? No, I'm going to stick with Neil. You made it, Greg. Oh, you, you're muted. Oh, no! Neil. I'm going to stick with Neil. TJ? If it wasn't Oswald, it would have been Saga, so I'm going with Melanie Libbard. Ozzy? Melanie Libbard. Steve? I'll go with Melanie Libbard as well. Okay. And uh, Denny is with Melanie Libbard, and Bill and Sam were with Asterian. So Melanie Libbard wins. Six to four. Congratulations to Melanie. Uh, her performance of Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2 was excellent. Everyone else in this category did an amazing job, too. And we salute Absolutely. all voice actors and all actors and performers in what has been a tough year for performers as well, uh, with an ongoing negotiation between the voice actors and video game studios happening right now still. Uh, yeah, Melanie Libbard, her performance of, as Saga Anderson has landed her the Shack News Award for the best voice actor of the year 2023. Congratulations. The overlap is at the pond. Fuck. Here we go again. 